in order to assemble a car. Four tires and two headlights are needed, among other things. In this example, imagine that the tires and headlights are reactants while the car is the product formed from the reaction of four tires and two headlights. If you have 20 tires and 14 headlights, how many cars can be made? With 20 tires, five cars can be produced because there are four tires to a car. With 14 headlights, seven cars can be built. Each car needs two headlights. Although more cars can be made from the headlights available, only five full cars are possible because of the limited number of tires available. In this case, the headlights are in excess. Because the number of cars formed by 20 tires is less than number of cars produced by 14 headlights, the tires are the limiting reagent, they limit the full completion of the reaction, in which all of the reactants are used up. This scenario is illustrated as, 4 tires plus 2 headlights equals 1 car. The initial condition is that, there must be 4 tires, to 2 headlights. The reactants must thus occur in that ratio. Otherwise, one will limit the reaction. There are 20 tires and 14 headlights, so there are two ways of looking at this problem. For 20 tires, 10 headlights are required, whereas for 14 headlights, 28 tires are required. Because there are not enough tires, tires are the limiting reactant. The limiting reagent is the reactant that is completely used up in a reaction, and thus determines when the reaction stops. From the reaction stoichiometry, the exact amount of reactant needed to react with another element can be calculated. If the reactants are not mixed in the correct stoichiometric proportions, as indicated by the balanced chemical equation, then one of the reactants will be entirely consumed while another will be left over. The limiting reagent is the one that is totally consumed. It limits the reaction from continuing because there is none left to react with the in excess reactant. The following example demonstrates how to determine which reactant is limiting, which is in excess, and the amount of product formed when limiting reagent is present. Problem tetraphosphorus decoxide, is formed from the reaction between solid white phosphorus and oxygen. If 25 grams of phosphorus and 50 grams of oxygen are initially used, to form tetraphosphorus decoxide. A. Which is the limiting reagent and which is the excess reagent? B. How many grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide are produced? C. How much of the excess reagent are left after the reaction? Before you start solving, identify first the given and the unknown, as always. So, we have the given, mass of P4, 25 grams. And, mass of oxygen, 50 grams. What is the unknown or being asked in the problem? You have to determine, which between, phosphorus, and oxygen, is the limiting and excess reagent. You also need to compute the amount of products based on the limiting reagent, and the amount of excess reagent left when the reaction is completed. Strategy. First step. Write a balanced equation for the reaction. Our reactants, are phosphorus and oxygen gas, yielding tetraphosphorus decoxide. Now, balance this equation. So, we have P4 plus 5O2, then P4O10. Second step. Determine which is the limiting reactant. The limiting reagent limits the amount of the product formed. To determine which between P4 and O2 is limiting, compute the amount of P4O10 formed, based on the amounts of P4. The reactant that will give the lower amount of the product is the limiting reagent. Use your knowledge on mole concept, and mole ratios to do this step. Again, the solution should start with the given. 25 grams of P4. Then, next would be the molar mass of 1 mole of P4. 1 mole of P4 is written above, 
and below is the molar mass, which is 124 grams, for us to cancel out grams of P4. Next, is the stoichiometric ratio between phosphorus and tetraphosphorus decoxide, based on the balanced equation. One mole of phosphorus, is 2, one mole of tetraphosphorus decoxide. Next is the molar mass of a one mole of tetraphosphorus decoxide, which is, 284 grams. Cancel out other units, remaining grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide. Then, do the computation. 25, divided by, 124, times, 284 grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide. Equals, 57.3 grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide. Is the amount of product formed when all phosphorus is consumed. Now, let's have the amount of product formed when all oxygen gas is consumed. As what we did, let's start with the given, 50 grams of oxygen gas, next, is the molar weight of a 1 mole of oxygen gas. That is 32 grams. Then, the stoichiometric ratio, between oxygen gas, and tetraphosphorus decoxide based on the balanced equation, that is, 5 moles of oxygen gas, is 2, 1 mole of tetraphosphorus decoxide. Next, is the molar mass of a 1 mole of tetraphosphorus decoxide, that is 284 grams. Cancel out all the unnecessary units, then do the calculation. 50, divided by, 32, divided by, 5, times, 284, equals, 88.7 grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide. Since, the mass of tetraphosphorus decoxide produced, when all phosphorus is consumed is less, than the mass when oxygen gas is used. Therefore, the limiting reagent is phosphorus, while the excess reagent is oxygen gas. The amount of the product formed is based on the limiting reagent, thus, 57.3 grams of tetraphosphorus decoxide is produced. That will be the answer for letter B question. When this amount of tetraphosphorus decoxide is produced, the reaction will stop leaving an amount of the excess reactant, oxygen gas, unreacted. Third step. To know the amount of the excess reagent left after the reaction, to answer letter C question, compute the amount of the excess reagent that is actually used, based on the amount of the limiting reagent, or the amount of the product formed. Just subtract the actual amount of the excess reagent used, from the initial amount given. Now, let's compute the amount of oxygen gas, that will react with the limiting reagent, which is phosphorus. 25 grams phosphorus, divided by the molar weight of a 1 mole of P4, which is 124 grams of phosphorus. Next, the stoichiometric ratio of phosphorus and oxygen gas, from the balanced equation. That is, 1 mole, is 2, 5 moles, times, the molar weight of a 1 mole of oxygen gas, that is 32 grams. Cancel all the unneeded units, then calculate. 25, divided by, 124, times, 5, times, 32, equals, 32.3 grams of oxygen gas. That is the actual amount of oxygen gas used, after the limiting reagent, phosphorus, is totally consumed. Now, let's solve how much is the leftover oxygen gas. The excess amount of oxygen gas left is, 50 grams, minus, 32.3 grams, equals, 17.7 grams. That is now the leftover oxygen gas. You can also check your answer. The answers are written in the correct number of significant figures. The mass of the limiting reagent, phosphorus, which is 25 grams, and the mass of oxygen gas, that is actually consumed, 32.3 grams. Add up to the mass of the product, tetraphosphorus decoxide formed, 
57.3 grams, in accordance to the law of conservation of mass. Let's have the next problem. Acrylonitrile is the starting material for the production of acrylic, a common synthetic fiber. This compound can be prepared from the reaction between propylene and nitrogen monoxide, based on the following balanced chemical reaction, 4C3H6, plus, 6NO, then, 4C3H3N, plus, N2. If 126 grams of propylene, and, 175 grams of nitrogen monoxide, were initially used, determine, the limiting and excess reagents. The mass of acrylonitrile produced. And, the mass of excess reagent, or the leftover. Let's have the solution for A. Let's start with the mass of acrylonitrile produced from the given propylene. 126 grams of propylene, divided, the molar mass of a 1 mole of propylene, that is 42 grams. Take note, grams of propylene should be written below, for us to cancel it out, later. 1 mole of propylene is above it. Next would be the stoichiometric ratio from the balanced equation, 4 moles of propylene, is 2, 4 moles of acrylonitrile. Times, the molar mass of a 1 mole of acrylonitrile that is 53 grams. Now, cancel out all unneeded units, remaining, grams of acrylonitrile, to answer the problem. Then, let's compute, 126, divided by, 42, times, 53, equals, 159 grams of acrylonitrile. Let's have the mass of acrylonitrile produced from 175 grams of nitrogen monoxide. So, 175 grams of nitrogen monoxide, divided by, the molar mass of nitrogen monoxide, which is 30 grams. Next, is the stoichiometric ratio from the balanced equation, that is, 4 moles of acrylonitrile, is 2, 6 moles of nitrogen monoxide. Times, the molar mass of a 1 mole of acrylonitrile, which is, 53 grams. After that, do the cancellation of units, then calculate. 175, divided by, 30, times 4, divided by, 6, times 53 equals 206 grams of acrylonitrile. Based on the calculations, the limiting reagent is propylene, and the excess is nitrogen monoxide. That's for question A. For B, the mass of acrylonitrile produced is 159, based on the limiting reagent, propylene. Now, let's solve C. The mass of nitrogen monoxide that is required to react with the limiting reactant to determine the leftover. 126 grams of propylene, times, the molar mass of a 1 mole of propylene. Next, is the stoichiometric ratio, from the balanced equation, 6 moles of nitrogen monoxide, is 2, 4 moles of propylene. Times, the molar mass of a 1 mole of nitrogen monoxide equals 135 grams of nitrogen monoxide. That is the actual nitrogen monoxide used in the production of acrylonitrile. Now, let's compute the leftover. 175 grams minus 135 grams equals 40 grams of nitrogen monoxide left in excess. Now, it is your turn to answer. Green plants manufacture glucose through a process called photosynthesis. In this process, plants convert carbon dioxide and water to glucose and oxygen gas. If plant has 88 grams of carbon dioxide and 64 grams of water available for photosynthesis, determine a the limiting and excess reagents. b. The mass of glucose produced. 
and c. The mass of the excess reagent, not consumed in the reaction. Thank you. Hope you learned something valuable today. Kindly comment your answer. And don't forget to like and like this video. Also, please subscribe and hit the notification bell, for you to be updated, if we have a new video uploaded. Learn Chemistry with Sir D. See you again, in the next tutorial. God bless.